Greetings everybody, this is your last Play Knuckles from One Else Insider, and today I have with me two playbooks. One of them running OS version 1, other one running new version OS 2 that just came out uh, around mid-February of 2012. Uh, let's go over the little differences visually before we get into the whole uh, meat and potatoes of these things. Looking at the main screens right here, you can tell on version 1 versus version 2. Version 1 does have categories here, so all favorites, media, games, and Blackberry Bridge. When you scroll it up, you know, you do have the correct category showing you what you can do. Here, we don't have named categories anymore. Instead, we have five icons that remain static throughout the entire uh, process of navigating through the playbook. And then you have little icons here indicated by these small little boxes. So if you see this one box there, swipe to the right, we moved over to another box. So very similar to Android and iOS devices. So you do have five icons that are static and then you have all your other stuff at the bottom, which is cool. If we take a look at the top here, not much has changed in terms of settings, version two, version one, it's all the really difference there. And uh, I just noticed that the power management icon is a little larger here. So they're trying to go for the full large thing. For example, if we go ahead and open up, uh, I guess the photo gallery, uh, just to show you what I mean, pictures, pictures. You do notice that, although they do look the same, and performance should pretty much be the same as well. Didn't really notice much of a difference. Both of them are very smooth. Okay, let's go over. Pinch to zoom. Very smooth. So pictures were never a problem for the playbook. Uh, but if you take a look at how you multitask now, it is a little larger on version 2. And that is nice to see because you can see more of it. Uh, there's no reason to keep it so small. And with the elimination of the named categories, it's nice to have that much real estate to look at. It does look much more professional. So, yeah, killing applications are done by swiping it upwards. One significant difference, obviously, is that OS 2 will provide natively built into the playbook support for... If I can find it here... Uh, well, there it is right in front of you, actually. Messages, contacts, calendar, and... I think that's pretty much it. Uh, native support on the device itself without you needing to have a BlackBerry because, you know, of course, previously in version one, you did need to have a BlackBerry. That is the significant thing that it's bringing to the table that's different. Uh, to make this fair, I'm going to connect my BlackBerry to OS 1 so we can compare visually the differences between messages, contacts, calendar, BBM, and all that stuff. Okay, and so now it's connected. My BlackBerry is connected to the playbook here. So let's go over visually the differences. First, let's go into uh, messages. Let me just do my password here. And let me just get into a certain inbox, and what you're seeing, I have like seven email accounts here. <laughs> so let me go into my personal one here, Wireless Insider, okay. There we have it, okay. So there it is, and I've already set it up on the Playbook version OS 2 here. So I don't need a BlackBerry, my BlackBerry is connected to the old one, not the new one. This is set up on the device itself. And uh, there you have it, you have my emails as well, with the option to get more images. And right away you can tell between version 1 and version 2. Version 1 you do have more icons at the bottom of the playbook, whereas uh, version 2 you do have them on the left and the right side. If you swipe from the top for more options, you do realize there's more settings instead of just font size. You can also change um, the way you sort your emails, selecting things uh, or multi-select through settings and composing emails. So these give you more functionality there. Great. Let's get out of here. Now let's take a look at the calendar. Uh, bam. Of course, it integrates with your email client, in this case, Gmail. Uh, very conservative on OS version 1, you know, it just has a full calendar view or week view or day view. And if you click on something, you know, it'll take up the entire screen. OS 2 brings something much more sexier to the table, I do imagine. Uh, instead of icons at the bottom, they're on the side here and the top. But you do have the ability to view your day uh, by clicking on the date of the month. And on the right-hand side, it shows you what you have as an appointment that day. So as you can see, according to this, right there, review OS 2.0, without interrupting or moving me from this main page, which is very nice, non-intrusive, very cool. So that's how calendar looks, significant difference. I really love this, you can go by day view, agenda view, and without interrupting the overall month view. So let's get out of here, let's see what else we have. We have contacts, okay? Let's see what's different. Again, this is straight set up, synchronized to my Gmail account using Wi-Fi, no need to have a BlackBerry. And we get, again, you can see here on version two, it's black, like the sidebar here, and you do have contacts, uh, easy to see. Let's go, you need this here as well. And the options are on the right-hand side to, you know, uh, connect to them, uh, send message, add to calendar, check for appointments or anything of that nature. Swipe downwards, same thing, not really much to do, which is fine because this just synchronizes and it's very smooth. So, great. Actually, uh, you notice that, it's lagging here in OS 1, OS 2, much smoother. And you're going to see a lot of this. One big noticeable difference is in the web browser. So let's go ahead and load up the browser here. Okay. And I want to load Engadget.com on both of them. Just do a quick speed test. Okay. Engadget.com on both of these. Three, two, one. Fire away. I guess it was playing something else. All right. <laughs> 
flash is enabled on both devices, of course. Let's hide this. I think I can, I think I can. Who's gonna win? Well, while it's still loading, let's go ahead and see how it looks. So a lot of checkerboarding on OS 1, OS 2, no checkerboarding, okay, actually. As you can see, much better experience here on the right. Not choppy, very smooth. And this is without flash content, eh? If we go ahead and do something like YouTube. Okay, YouTube's loaded. Let's load the uh, 300 movie trailer. You also notice on the keyboard here, uh, return's been replaced by the uh, simple key of uh, little arrow. So yeah, universal symbol for enter. Can't complain. Both loaded quickly, obviously. Let's load up the actual movie movie trailer. So speed is very similar. You can tell they're very similar in loading speed, but what really makes OS 2.0 shine is the smoothness when scrolling with flash content or multimedia running. So for example, flash movies playing, that's fine. If we go ahead and try to scroll here, you do notice that this one is smoother. This one does have a lag of input. There you have it again. Very choppy on the left. This one's smooth, as smooth as it can be. I'm mean, just still getting about 25 frames per second as opposed to 10 or 15 frames, which is just ugly. Like, see, it skips, you sometimes pause by accident. Here, you have a better experience. So, yeah, pinching the zoom as well with any text content. You know, it's not too bad. And here on the older OS version one, it does you know, lag around and makes you wonder what the heck you're doing here. So, yeah. So, flu uh, browsing is smoother, which is nice. Uh, that's one of the major advantages. Not as smooth as it could be, but certainly better than it was in OS version 1, and it does render websites very nicely. Next difference would be the application world. So if you go and load application world uh, between version 1 and version 2, uh, you do have access to some Android applications. There aren't a whole lot out there now because they're still trying to figure out what's the best settings for them, and they're still fairly new in the marketplace, but they're slowly getting there. Um, we're not talking about widgets. We're talking about applications. So uh, this is how the new application store looks like. You know, version 1, very simple choppy on the version 2 a little choppy as well but at least it shows you a bit more information fine if you go to a different category like games okay you do have games instead of just a simple outline of categories via text there's actual images here of some applications that are featured so yes not the smoothest experience but they are there as for android support you know those applications are slowly coming out this update enables android applications to be compatible as long as they are optimized for the playbook okay so let's get out of here Already I got rid of the OS 1 device, and so now we just have uh, OS 2 running on this playbook. It's already uh, bridged to my BlackBerry Bold 9900. So uh, let's go over to some other cool stuff on the OS 2.0 all by itself. First off is predictive text input. If you go into a messaging application of some sort, let's go to messages, and you want to compose a new message or anything like that, you will now have the option to choose from words uh, that are in the dictionary. So let me go to compose email. Okay, whatever. If I start typing things here, hello. You do see now you can put in certain words by default in the dictionary. So yeah, you have predictive text input now. Hopefully that'll speed things up. It depends what you really need to use it or if you will make use of this feature, but there you have it. Great, okay, let's get out of here. So predictive text, predictive text is one big thing, but also another functionality that was released with the software update to this device out of the box, as well as a software update available for BlackBerry devices, for BlackBerry Bridge, they're bringing it in line with OS 2.0, is the ability to do something pretty cool. So if we go ahead and go into your device, all right, let's go to the browser. I'm on Engadget.com, you know, I really want to see something. Hey, cool, check that out. BlackBerry Playbook product, man. Well, you know what? I want to see it on my playbook. Hit menu. View on Playbook, in this case 8722, that's the name of mine, automatically loads there. Don't even have to use this anymore, but if I do want to, it gives you a really cool remote control pad. So if you swipe up here, it'll control what you're doing on your Playbook. It's also, uh, if you can see the cursor there, you have the ability to scroll around. So, yeah, pretty cool. More of a gimmick, but you know what? Why not? Imagine having this connected via HDMI to your television. You want to control it, but you're about five or six meters away. Well, now you can using Bluetooth, which we all know has a 10 meter range, so perfect. And now you can access it there. So there's another cool, cool feature, and as well as the OS update for the playbook, you now have the ability to connect A2DP compatible devices. Uh, that stands for Advanced Audio Distribution Protocol. So in this case, you'll be able to connect stereo headphones. In this case, my Sony or my uh, Motorola stereo headphones here. But anything that supports stereo audio, you can now connect to the playbook and you can listen to music wirelessly. No more mono sound. Now it's all going to be nice, big, and good in stereo. So there you have it. That's pretty much the significant differences between OS 1 and OS 2, especially if you have a playbook, you can take use of that 
that nifty feature of controlling things on your playbook from your cell phone. But even if you don't have it, it doesn't matter. It does now come with messages, contacts, browser, calendar, you know, natively on a device. So you do not need a BlackBerry phone to take advantage of those features. And there are significant improvements in web browsing and overall functionality of the device. So yes, it's a very warm welcome. It's nice to see they have it here. Again, this is Elias Planakos from Wireless Insider. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments section below. And if you like what you saw here today, please like and subscribe. Until next time, take care.